Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Balkan. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint a Necron Plasmancer. If you'd like to support the channel, our Coffee and Patreon page are linked below. Now on to the video. So the first colour we're going to use is Vallejo Black, but whichever black you tend to use is fine. I'm going to use this to do the main body of the staff and also the kind of main body of the Necron 2. So this is going to be going on to all the sort of armour joints, the fingers, Basically everything that isn't the armour plates on his body. So you've got the length of that kind of spine thing dangling down with the blade at the end. You've got the spiny bits sticking out of his back all the way up to where his neck is. So that's all going to be black too, like so. Next colour we're going to use is Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to use this on the little kind of engine things at the back there. Giving those a little bit of a green glow, nothing major. Just a little bit of colour. I'm also going to use this on the blade, which is sticking out of his kind of spine at the end there, and a few little pieces of the staff too. Next up, Citadel Retributor Armour. I'm going to use this to do the kind of dangling chains. Now, you don't have to do them this colour, you can do them the same colour as the main body if you wanted to, or the lighter shade, which we'll be doing on the main body too. But I'd like to have these in gold. It's the kind of one of the almost leaders or senior Necrons. I think the gold does kind of set them off. I think that probably comes from the Nihilak colours. And also the kind of colours of the old Egyptian pharaohs and that kind of thing. So now I'm going to use some Citadel Mook Green. I'm going to use this to do the little bladey part at the base of the weapon and then also the actual blade at the very top too. Give this a nice flat coat of mook green. It tends to be quite a good colour to paint on and we'll go over most stuff but if you do get any streaks it's good to get that streaking coloured over with another coat. Now we're going to use a little bit of Vallejo Model Air Chrome this is going to be just to do a few of the little details on him. We've got like the little symbol on his chest and he's also got one on each side of the kind of halberd too. We've also got the little pistons that they tend to have on their neck and also on the forearms too. Next up is Citadel Araman Blue, and we're going to use this to do each of the little discs on these golden chains, and also the piece of dark stone or whatever it is on this part here, or black stone is it? I think dark stone is actually from the game Shadows of Brimstone, so name confusion coming out here. We'll give that a nice smooth coat of Araman Blue, and then do each of the little circular discs on the chains with Araman Blue 2. Now we're going to use some Vallejo White, but whichever white you usually use is fine. We're going to do the eye and the globe on the staff. Also going to do some points of light on, he's got like six cylinders sticking out of his back and each of those has got like a little circle which is visible on each side between the sort of like the casing that's around them. So I'm going to do that as though that's growing green as well. Next up, we're going to use some Citadel Canoptech Alloy. I'm going to use this to do the shoulder blades, like these two big plates, one on either side, and also the face too. This will just break up the overall colour of him, so he's got a few lighter parts and a few darker parts on him. Like so. Now we're going to use a little bit of Citadel Runelord Brass. This is just to go over any of the areas of the 
armour or the miniature where we might have gone over it with some of the different colours. So just touch them up so you've got the nice smooth Rune Lord brass part on the areas of the miniature where you want that colour. And we can move on to the next colour. Next up, we have a Citadel Adraxair shade. I'm going to be using this just to dull down and shade all of the gold. So I started putting it on really carefully, but if you just drag the brush over the whole gold chain, so even if it goes over the Araman blue, it's not too much of an issue. You'll be using some blue shade to darken those up. And once you start re-highlighting it, it doesn't really make too much difference, so you can just drag that Adraxair shade all the way down those kind of chains that'll just save you a little bit of time when painting them the next shade is going to be citadel null oil i'm going to use this to do all of the silvery metallics so all of those sections that we use the model air chrome and the lead belcher on now we're going to use a little bit of citadel bl tan green Going to be putting this onto the blade of his weapon there. You mainly want this in the recesses. It doesn't matter if you get it on the whole blade, but you might want to try to just get it on the areas where you're going to have that shade in the recesses. Let's say if you're having to go over the rest of the blade and green that back up again. Also use this to paint the Araman blue blackstone piece on the staff too. Now I'm going to use some Drakenhof nightshade and this is going to be to paint each of the little circular gemstones on the gold chains. Obviously you don't have to paint them as gemstones if you don't want to, it does add quite a bit of time. But I do think it looks quite cool to have those little reflective gems down each of the chains makes them look a little bit more detailed and catches the eye a little bit next up is citadel shade cryptek armor shade it's a gloss one this when it goes on it gives you quite a varied color some parts will be dark some parts lighter but it adds to the overall weathered effect of the rune lord brass and a canoptech alloy so give them a coat of that and then once you start re-highlighting and reapplying color they'll really start to stand out and take shape now we're going to use some citadel retributor armor we're going to use this to reapply color to all of those chains that we've just been doing now what I tend to do with these is leave a little piece on one side. In this case, I'm using the bottom right-hand corner and leaving that shaded and then doing it as though the light is coming from the top left or catching the light more from the top left. And if you work on that sort of thing, like work the lighter shades into the opposite corner of the dark shade, then that'll get look, that looking pretty good once finished. Now we are going to be using some Citadel Liberator Gold to highlight the Retributor Armour. So you want to be doing this in sort of like about 50% of the area that you've just reapplied the Retributor Armour on the top left of the gold sections. Now we're going to use some Citadel Stormhost Silver. We're mixing this with the Liberator Gold. And we're going to do one final highlight on these gold sections. We're going to be choosing the top layers of each, or top edges of each of these sections. So you've got the two bits at the top, then a little crescent underneath the Araman Blue Stone. And by highlighting these, it means that when you look at them and when they catch the light, those edges will stand out more as though they are catching the light 
that little bit better. Now I'm going to start working on those stones, so using the Citadel Araman Blue again. The Araman Blue is going to be on the bottom half in almost a crescent on each of these little stones. So paint these up similar to how you paint lenses up. So I'm going to post up the night lens so you can see the overall plan of how it's done how it looks and this is what we're going for on a very smaller scale so it doesn't really have to be as accurate we're going to add a little bit of white to the araman blue i'm going to try and do about 50 percent of the previous layer So because these are so small, we're not going to be doing quite the amount of highlights that we usually would on these. So if you watch that lens video that I've posted up, we'll do in far smaller amounts of layers on this one. So this time we're just going to use a little bit of pure white. We're going to put a tiny spot of white in the top right of each of the gems, and then a really thin line of white on the bottom left of the gems. Once these are in place, that will give them that gemstone look and reflection as though the light's catching them. If you want, you can gloss paint those once it's been matte varnished, just to give them a little bit of shine to make them look like a little gemstone. But it doesn't really matter too much if you manage to get the highlights done okay, and it does look a little bit like they are reflecting anyway. So this globe at the bottom here, and the eye of the plasmanta, I'm using a little bit of Vallejo white here just to paint some streaks on. Because we put BL Tan green on those, that's giving it darker edges and darker around the recesses. And that white will just line that up so that when we put the technical paint on a bit later on, that will glow up where the white is and have little darker streaks inside it. So now we're starting to work on the armor plates. We're going to be using Citadel Rune Lord Brass. And the Rune Lord Brass is going to go onto most of the armour plates on the body. The shoulder pads and the head, you don't really need to do it because you'll be going over most of them with the Canoptech alloy. But I failed to remember that and painted the shoulders with the Rune Lord Brass first and then I have to go over the whole things with the Canoptech alloy to lighten them up again. So now using the Canoptech alloy, you're going to use this to paint up the head and also the big shoulder pads then you're going to use it to highlight all the armor plates on the rest of the body Now we're going to use some Citadel Stormhost Silver just to do the final highlights on the armour plates and the head, what have you. So if you want to pick out the details and the edges, you want to be thinking about where the light's coming from. And so highlighting those top edges on the miniature where they will be catching the most light. Always find the videos for the Necrons a bit interesting to try and get the exposure and the lighting right on them. Because they have that much of a shine that sometimes the camera will pick up the shine rather than the details so the actual black parts of the miniatures you can't see properly. We're going to work on those now. We're going to use Vallejo Black. I'm just going to go over all of the areas that we've overshot with the paintbrush doing different colours. So repaint all those black bits or touch them up so that they have a nice smooth black coat to them. Then we can move on to highlighting these black sections. Now we're going to use some Vallejo German Grey. The German Grey is going to be to highlight all the areas that we've just done in black. 
So with this you want to be thinking about where the light is catching the miniature. So if the light's shining from above, where it's going to catch those sections of black. So it's going to be around the top areas. You want to be highlighting those and leaving just the plain black underneath. And with the spear, it's sort of segmented. So I've done the top kind of 50% of each segment with that. And then we're going to use Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey to do some edge highlights. So around the top of each segment, we're going to be doing the highlights with this. And then we're going to do the same kind of highlights on all the other black sections too, where they will be catching the light. So the likes of the hands and the finger joints, they have loads and loads of little segments on them. So it's worth trying to catch them if you can, using a very, very thin brush, because that will make the details of those hands really stand out. So now we're going to use some Citadel Technical Tesseract Glow, and we're going to use this to do the eye. We're going to use it to do the globe on the staff, the tube that runs down his body, and also put a little bit on the engines just to make them have that little kind of green glow. And if you want to, you can add a little bit of it to the edges of certain areas to make it look like the glow from those green parts is glowing onto the staff. This cool is really, really cool for doing little faint glows on the edges of things. So if you go over those sections too much, just like a little bit, around the area, I wouldn't worry too much because it just gives it that effect that it is glowing a little. So we're going to work on the blades now, we're going to use Citadel Mook Green. So we're just going to flatten these off and get these one nice smooth Mook Green colour again, leaving the BL Tan Green in the recesses. Ziggy's come to say hello. And then once you've got those blades back up to green again, we can start getting them looking nice and shiny. So what we've done here is we've added a little bit of Vallejo White to the Moot Green just to make a lighter shade. And we're gonna divide up the blade into several separate parts. He just decided to come down and use the cat scratcher while I'm recording. So we are separating these up into different sections, as you can see. What I do is make them go slightly over the edge, so you can then work out where the section is going to be on the other side, so it's roughly the same. I'm just doing some lighter highlights of that colour on the bottom part of the blades too. We are now going to add some more Vallejo White. I'm going to use this to highlight the areas we've just done, but leaving some of the previous shade visible either end if you can. If it's the tip of the blade you want that going to white or if it's the end of the blade you want this highlight going right to the very end of it. If it's a section of highlight in the middle you want some of the previous shade at each end. Now I'm going to add a little bit more white. I'm going to repeat that process so we're getting more and more highlights on these sections of blade to get them lighter and lighter. Now we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and just do that next highlight. You can really see the white parts taking shape. You can see the original sections of Mook Green just look quite plain at the minute, but we are going to darken them down in a similar style, but a very, very easy method of doing that. And finally, we're going to use some pure white just to do the final highlights to these areas that we've been highlighting. Like so. And 
Now we're going to use some BL Tan Green. We're going to use this on the areas which are just flat moot green at the minute. So you want to leave a little section of moot green alone. And then use this BL Tan Green to shade the opposite ends to the bits that you've highlighted with white mixes. What you'll see happening there is you'll be able to get a nice darker shade on the opposite ends. With very, very little effort. So we're going to do another layer of this as well. You can actually keep doing layers of this to darken it for a, as much as you want, but I'll probably be doing just the two layers with the BL Tan Green. But you can keep darkening it if you need to, or if you want to. So here, doing the same thing again, but we're using the BL Tan Green on a smaller area, much like you did with the highlights for the white. You can now see these blades going from that white to dark green with pretty little effort. So now using the layer white or whichever white you want to use and a really thin brush. I'm using a Army Painter Wargamer character brush here. Just going to do the edges in white on this blade just to pick them out. That separates them and gives it that kind of almost like a shine on the edges. I just think it really, really brings out the colouring quite well if you have those really thin white lines going down it. So on the edges of things where it's quite square, I'm just dragging the side of the brush. And then if you're using it on a more or less flat surface, like the edge of those curved blade parts, you can just drag it straight down. So here, working on a piece of blackstone, I'm just going to do thin highlights of Ariman Blue on the edges. I'm going to add a little tiny spot of white to the blue just to get a nice little highlight on those. With this layer finished, so is the Necron Plasmancer. This is the finished Plasmanta. Really pleased with how it turned out. Particularly happy with the blade. All in all, the cracking figure. And happy with how we finished. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.